And let's stick with this story for a moment because we have reached royal commentator Dickie Arbiter. He's the former press secretary for Buckingham Palace, and he joins me from our studio in London. Well, Dickie, what did you make of this? The appearance on the stairs, the waves, and the big smiles. It was a great moment. Uh, it was a moment that everybody was hoping for. It was a moment that everybody got. It's quite interesting in that uh, Kate went into uh, early stages of labour at 6 o'clock this morning, went into the St Mary's Hospital Lindo wing, and at uh, 24 minutes, no, 26 minutes to 9, that's 26 minutes to 4 Canadian time, um, the little princess was born. Very quick, unlike with George, uh, who took a long time coming. Kate went into hospital at the same time, but George wasn't born until uh, 4.30 in the afternoon UK time. So it was an easy birth, by all accounts. She was able to rest. Uh, the baby was able to, uh, to rest as well. Mother and baby were doing extremely well, so much so that they were released from hospital at 10 minutes past 6 this evening. Only a man would say it was an easy birth, Dickie. <laughs> well, by all accounts, it must have been an easy birth because, you know, the, the baby was born two and a, a little more than two and a half hours after that she went into hospital. So it was a lot easier than George because she was in labour for a long time. Hey, we saw George when his dad picked him up, brought him over to the hospital to greet his new little sister. But this is the first time we've seen him at the UK, you know, since he was in the UK. What, what does that say about Will and Kate as parents to you? I think what it says about his parents is that uh, both William and Catherine want to keep him out of the limelight and want him to give him a bit of privacy. Um, it's very important that uh, the children at the early stages of their life are not bombarded by photographers. We saw that in the early stages of, uh, of William and Harry. Uh, it, didn't, um, it didn't help. They didn't like it. And uh, it, it got so bad that eventually... Uh, because of what happened in Paris, uh, photographers were accused of chasing, uh, chasing the car and their mother got killed tragically. So he's trying to shield um, his son. He'll do the same with his daughter. The benefit that he has is because uh, he's second in line to the throne, he does have that cushion to be able to establish some good family time, which uh, the Prince of Wales and the late Diana Princess of Wales didn't have because uh, public duty was demanded of them almost immediately. It's a similar sort of scenario that the Queen and Prince Philip had when Charles was born. Mm -hmm. They had a bit of family time, but unfortunately the Queen's father, King George VI, was extremely ill and the Queen had to step in rather early. So that quality family time was cut very short. William is making sure that it doesn't happen to him. As former press secretary for Buckingham Palace, I'm sure you know uh, all the nooks and crannies of that building. So give me a sense of what's happening there at the palace. And I understand the Queen is on her way back from an event in Yorkshire, back to London. But what's happening there amongst the staff and the people who are in the palace as they get the news of this? Well, there would be a lot of ooing and ahhing. Everybody likes the birth of a new baby. It, it, it does something. It's a feel-good factor. We're going through a sort of fairly gloomy period at the moment because there's a lot of electioneering because we have a general election next Thursday. And I think most uh, people in the, in the UK are heartily fed up not only with the politicians but with the whole idea of an election coming up. So the feel-good factor of a new royal baby, uh, a princess, uh, which is terrific news because we haven't had a, a senior princess for a long time. Mm -hmm. And they'll be ooing and aahing and cooing over the baby at Kensington Palace, although I reckon the baby is fast asleep by now, probably having been fed, probably having had its nappy changed, uh, and will stay so until probably a couple of hours later when it wants to be fed again. So the Duke and Duchess are going to have a few sleepless nights while the baby gets used to the idea of growing, and eventually she will go through the night. But for the moment, I don't think she will will go through the night. You know what, will they really have sleepless nights or are there, uh, you know, a, a, an army of, of nannies to help out so that Prince, uh, so that the Duchess does get her sleep and, and uh, Prince William gets his sleep, that kind of thing? Uh, there isn't an army of nannies. They have got, they, they, they have got uh, some extra help, but what in, in the form of one person um, who is there for the early stages of uh, the princess, the new princess settling in, but not an army. There's one thing William and Catherine don't have, and that's an army of servants. They made very clear 
they didn't actually want servants at all, but you can't be uh, a member of the royal family, be expected to carry out royal duty, be expected to entertain and not have any staff to help you. So they have got some staff, but they haven't got an army of staff. Let me ask you a final question about names. Uh, we know that bookies are suggesting there are front runners, Alice being one of them, Charlotte being another. Uh, I was speaking with another royal watcher who suggested that Diana will be somewhere in the middle names of which there could be many. What do you think? Well, I don't think Diana will be. It's, it's too emotive. Um, if there is a reference to Diana amongst the names, it's possible that it could be Francis. That was one of Diana's names. Mm -hmm. And that was William's maternal grandmother's name as well. Uh, Alice is top of the, the bookies poll. The bookies stand to lose a lot of money <laughs> if Alice became, <laughs> becomes the prime name. Elizabeth is there as well. Victoria is not far behind. I was talking earlier to one of the bookies. Uh, they say Olivia has come in into the frame. Uh, Olivia is not um, a name that's been used in royal circles, uh, and I've, I've checked quite assiduously. Uh, names that are fairly common, Alice, Elizabeth, Mary, Alexandra, um, Victoria. Uh, there, there, there are quite a few, but uh, Olive is, uh, Olivia is not one of them. I reckon... And I'm pretty biased. I reckon Victoria is going to be the lead name. I say that because my daughter's called Victoria, and I think Princess Victoria rolls off the tongue very nicely. <laughs> I think Alice will be there, and I think Elizabeth will be there in deference to uh, William's grandmother, the Queen. So I think those are the three names, but who knows? William and Catherine probably announce those names on Tuesday, and then we'll be a lot wiser than we are now.